So as you guys know, there were two bets that Paul and I had going into the draft. The, uh, the, the first bet was the one if the Bills took a wide receiver in the first three rounds. Okay, That bet was settled, and the stipulation for that bet was that, Tom, that uh, Paul was going to have to wear a Tom Brady jersey. The second bet was uh, the trading up or trading back for the Bills. So my part was that if the Bills traded back with either Cincinnati, Carolina, or they stayed at nine, I won. If they traded up or back with anybody else, or if they traded back with anybody else, it was going to be uh, Paul would win. If they traded up, it was a push. And the stipulation for the bet was that uh, the winner got to pick what the loser ate for breakfast for four straight weeks. So, as I do not live in Lockport, I live in some other... I decided to go to a gas station and get some of them breakfast snacks that are on the rollers. I don't know if you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. So, the French toast with sausage is going to be Paul's breakfast for today. I can't wait until he uh, he gets in the car and starts just getting pissed at me. So, we'll see how this goes. Hit that subscribe bell and join hashtag nation. The thing, the thing that you removed yeah. is your breakfast. Oh. Oh, what is this? <laughs> is this a tornado? A whirlwind of flavors? Oh my god, this looks like this looks like a heart attack. Uh you know what? Okay, first off, where's this from? A plus? Yep. Okay. This <laughs> All right. You know what Gordon Ramsay would say about this? It's raw. It's raw. It's, it's bland. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a dog shat in my tortilla. Yeah, this looks awful. That's but, that's but here's French the, toast and sausage. It doesn't smell that bad. Yeah. Well, it's, French well, toast never smells bad. It smells yeah, delicious. Yeah, this this is a, this might actually be a winner. This might. It, I mean, it looks. Awful. Well, it it, it it does look awful, but the the it looks main like a cigar. The main point of <laughs> the main. I could light this on a golf course and nobody would know any different. No, no, you wouldn't. However, <laughs> <laughs> the main point why I bought it is because they're 190 calories a piece. And I need to beef you up. <laughs> oh man, ours doesn't suck too bad. You are way more generous about it than I would be. You're eating a object shaped like that, and, says, and you and you decide to say it doesn't suck too bad. <laughs> I'm done with you for the rest of the day. I have to, comment section is dead on this video. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mario. We're not gonna get any production out of that. Nope. One. Now. I'm going to go a little bit outside the box. We always touted Green Bay because Green Bay likes to draft and develop players yep. all the time. The max, the max that Green Bay ever had in any one draft of players that they retained that were successful in Green Bay was two each draft. There were drafts that they had 10 to 12 picks, and they only hit on two of them. Yep. You all right, you look, at the wall. you look at the cat. That's the thing. Now, if you look, if you're able to retain two players – that you draft out of ten, out of ten, or eight, or whatever. If you're able to retain two, that's the, that's the key number here. That end up staying with the team and being successful with the team, you're doing well because if you have to think about it, how many guys really re-sign that you draft a lot? You know what I mean? There isn't, there isn't a lot of guys because you go out in free agency, you pick up and okay, we'll draft this guy. Like this. So if we look at the if we look at the drafts that the Bills have had recently, I know just in recent history from this regime. Um, you want to put the white, the, Trey White, yeah. Milano, yeah. Dawkins. Yeah. All right. Was, was Milano in that pick? No, Milano was. The, the following year. Wait. Milano, oh no, then White was too. Yeah. Okay, all right. So you got White and Dawkins. 
I mean, McDermott still had to pull the trigger on these as well. Sure. Yeah, McDermott was involved, but I mean, okay. you can't give Bean credit. For no, I'm not going to give Bean credit. McDerm- it I'm falls just, in the McDermott yes. bucket, you know? I'm just saying guys that you've drafted that you may think are here. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, you look so, at the guys who you want to resign to contract extensions. You're looking at White. You're looking at Milano. You're looking at Edmonds. You're looking at Allen. You're looking at Dawkins. Who you still, who's Dawkins? Could, not, could sign an extension. I'm not saying they couldn't have three guys that they retain. I'm right. just saying, though, the, the the arc of the draft, and if you're able to get two guys that stay with the team that you resign, I think that's a, that's a success because you're going to pick up other guys in, in free agency. Mm-hmm. You're going to pick up other guys off the waiver wire. You're going to pick up, a, you know, you're going to do a bunch of different things. So if those guys are serviceable for their for at least half of their contracts. So two years out of the four-year deals, mm-hmm. they're able to be serviceable. But those guys that are your studs, you get two of them every draft. That's your success. Yeah, you're a success. Mm-hmm. If you look at any draft board, I mean, I've looked at about 16 teams. When you when you say a success, you mean guys who are signed to a second contract, guys who are, who make it to their second deal and have sustainability in the NFL. Okay. All right. The thing that was interesting though was. Um, I looked at the draft history uh, of the Packers because they're, they're the biggest team that retains most of their players. Right. A lot of the guys that they retain, if you looked at it, they hit on two guys, two guys, two guys. And then when they signed Rodgers, it it was like half of them where they were hitting on one, mm-hmm. hitting two on one, on one, on two. When you have your quarterback in place, it makes your draft easier to mess up because you're like, oh, he can cover up stuff that's going on. Right. Here. Now, if you look in there, how many titles should Rodgers have? He should have more than one. Right. So they haven't been You're drafting right. very well, is my point, recently. But they're, I mean, they're one of those teams that like to retain a lot of the guys not sign on for agents. The point, the point that you make is good, right? Unfortunately, we don't really know how that's going to play out in Buffalo just yet, mm-hmm. right? But if you're looking at signing you know, two players per draft, two extensions, that's reasonable to me. Because you figure you're signing those extensions for often four years because they're younger players. So you say you do that every year, right? So mm-hmm. that gives you um, eight solid cornerstone players to build off of every year at least. At the, at the very worst, you have eight cornerstone players that you walk into every season that have been with the organization for yeah. a pretty decent amount of time. Um, not counting the guys that you already have in the pipeline from the draft. So, um, yeah, that does make you a success.